Welcome back, guys. So before we jump into the first section of uh, chapter one, what I'd like to do is um, talk a little bit about density, and that'll give us a chance to review uh, some math skills that are going to be important to us in this chapter. So let's go over a little terminology. So volume, the word volume has a very specific definition in science, and it's the amount of space occupied uh, by an object. So if we have something, it's how much room it's going to take up. If we have a simple object like a rectangle, um, then calculating the volume is not very difficult. So we, if we have a rectangle, um, rectangular prism, then um, we can calculate its volume because it has a length, a height, and a width, and the volume is all of those values multiplied together. We, it gets a little bit tricky um, when we have objects that have an irregular shape. So if we have some strange stone that we found, um, then it's not very easy for us to calculate what the volume is. In some instances, we can calculate volumes of strange shapes by using calculus. And that's uh, one of the main ideas that we cover in calculus, but obviously that's way beyond us right now. Um, but there are other ways to calculate shapes, and then sometimes calculus can't even help us find the volume of a shape. Um, and there's a really interesting method that we can use for things that can be submerged in water without uh, dissolving. And what we can do is we can take a, a beaker of water, fill it with water, And then once the object is completely submerged in the water, whatever it is, the water level will rise a certain amount. And we can use that to determine the amount of space that was taken up in the water by the object. And we can use that to calculate the volume of the object. Um, so a really neat method for um, calculating the volume of irregular shapes when we're not able to use simple math. Now, the units that we want to use for volume um, are going to depend on the size of the object and whether we're using um, the SI system or not. But as an example, Let's say that I have an object that's that big and I measure it and it's one centimeter long. That's a length. And the units are centimeters. Or I might have a box or a square and it's one centimeter by one centimeter. This is an area and its units are going to be one times one, which is one centimeters squared. Now a volume is a three-dimensional quantity. So like our rectangular prism, or in this case, maybe we have a cube. That might be one centimeter by one centimeter uh, by one centimeter. And in this case, like we said, this is a volume. And that's gonna be one times one times one. So one centimeter cubed. So those are gonna be our units. Now, additional examples of units, we might have um, one centimeter, like we said, or we could have one meter, or we could have one mile. Those are units of length that we'll commonly be using. For area, 
we might have one centimeter squared, one meter squared if it's a much bigger area, or maybe one square mile. We usually don't write mile squared like that. We usually write one square mile. Okay, these are not all equivalent to each other, obviously. It's just these are examples of units that we would use to measure areas. We would pick meters over centimeters if our area was rather big. And we would pick, again, square miles over meters or centimeters if our area was even bigger than that. And again, for volume, we might have uh, one centimeter cubed or one meter cubed or we would say one cubic mile. Okay, so those are some examples of units. So when we measure an object's volume, um, we are giving ourselves a numerical representation of the amount of space that that object takes up. Um, if we had a container, a cubed container, let's say, let me draw a hollow container here with some volume. Not very good. I'll try again. There we go. So we've got a container here. Um, if the container has a volume, let's say that this is one meter by one meter by one meter, then its volume is one cubic meter, and if we were to pour in a fluid, if we were to pour in water and fill it completely with water, it would hold one cubic meter of water. Now we don't typically measure volumes of liquids with meters, and we're going to talk about how we can convert those. Um, the most common unit for uh, measuring the volumes of liquids is liters or milliliters and there's a relationship one cubic centimeter is equal to one milliliter so this is a relationship that you're going to want to remember if we have a cube that's one centimeter by one centimeter by one centimeter, and we fill it with water, it will hold one milliliter of water. And here's another example of that. Now, if we wanted the conversion for liters, if we have a cube that's one decimeter by one decimeter by one decimeter, then it would be the same as holding one liter. So one cubic decimeter is equal to one entire liter of fluid. Now remember, a decimeter has the prefix deci, um, and so that's going to be equal to 10 centimeters. And let me give you that conversion here real quick. one meter. If we were to convert it to uh, decimeters, that would be 10 decimeters, which would be equal to 100 centimeters. Deci means 100, or sorry, 10. And centi means 100. Okay, so that's where those prefixes come from. It takes 10 uh, decimeters to make one meter, and it takes 
uh, 100 centimeters to make one decimeter. And one of the things that we're going to do tomorrow is that we're going to use this idea to prove this fact here that one decimeter is equal to 10 centimeters. Okay, so we'll do some practice with unit conversion tomorrow. All right, matter. So matter is the measurement of the amount of stuff, or sorry, mass is the measurement of the amount of stuff or matter that an object has. And the units for matter or amount of mass, sorry, switch this around, the units for mass or the amount of matter are grams, if we have something small, kilograms, if we have something that's not uh, quite as small, um, and sometimes these are the SI units, sometimes we measure uh, mass in different unit scales, but I want you to keep in mind pounds is not a unit of mass, okay? Pounds is a unit of force. This is what we're going to be using in class. And the SI unit, the base unit, is kilograms. I didn't actually write out kilograms. Let me write that out. And kilo means 1,000. So a kilogram is 1,000 grams. And again, we'll talk about unit conversion tomorrow. All right, so density. The mass and volume of an object can be used to find the density. Density is mass per unit volume of a material. We find density by taking the mass and dividing that by volume. So density is mass per unit volume. And the units for density could be something like grams per cubic centimeter. Remember the units for mass were grams and the units for centimeter were cubics, uh, or the units for volume were cubic centimeter. Or we might have a kilogram over a cubic meter, depending on the size and density of the object. All right, what I want for you guys to do now is uh, your this video is going to end in just a moment and you're going to need to go on to the second video.